All right, please welcome Cooper Brown Enos. He was an adult by the time I got to him. So, why superheroes are terrifying. But Cooper, superheroes are awesome. They wear tights, they have great hair, they save us, they do great things, but bear with me. When we peel back the layers, when we boil it down, superheroes get really, really scary. And when I'm talking about superheroes, I'm talking about the big houses, Marvel and DC, the comic book industry, and the big movie houses. And when I say superheroes, what most of you immediately come to mind is Batman. We love Batman. He is the number one superhero in the United States. He's awesome. He's the darkness. He's the bat. He's justice. He's the man that does what we all wish we could do. And what he does, though is punch crime into submission. But when we peel that back a little bit, what we get is a billionaire who inherited all of his money from his dead parents, who was raised by his butler, and he puts on a mask and he goes out into Gotham City and he punches crime into submission and emotionally he punches this guy, the Joker, who doesn't go to prison, he goes to Arkham Asylum where ostensibly he is attempted to be cured because the vast majority of Batman's villains are mentally handicapped. <laughs> Batman is these guys. Yes, really. Batman is a privileged white man that puts a mask on. He goes out into his community to use extrajudicial violence against the vulnerable members of the community to make his world safe. <laughs> this is the birth of a nation. 1915, the blockbuster of the year. It was a superhero movie. They were saving America. And then there's this guy, Iron Man, who also inherited billions of dollars from his father's armament company. And he, you know, made some poor life decisions and got some shrapnel embedded in his chest and instead of getting surgery, he installed an electromagnet with a car battery to keep the shrapnel out of his heart. But the car battery was heavy, so we invented the mini palladium arc reactor. Clean energy, the size of my two fists. And he uses it to make a suit that violates all FAA regulations, carries weaponry that violates the Geneva Conventions, and is powered by the thing that could solve the climate change problem. Clean energy, the size of my fists. No more climate change arguments, no more solar arguments, no more wind arguments. We would all just have to buy the thing from Stark Industries. But he doesn't even monetize it. This is Ayn Rand's wet dream. Batman, Iron Man, billionaires, saving us from ourselves with the God-given sense billionaires get from being billionaires, right? And then, okay, enough with these guys. We get Superman, right? What could that square jaw do wrong, really? He's a god. He can reverse time by going around the world fast enough. He flies, he has super strength. He can see through walls, and we're really, really lucky he crash-landed in Kansas instead of, say, the Soviet Union or North Korea. He's an American, a God-fearing American. And it would be great if he could come to the logical conclusion of his story. Because the end of the first Superman comic should just be there was peace on Earth. We've got these hurricane problems. He just breathes really deeply and blows them back out to sea. We've got the, the earthquake in Mexico and he just sees through the rubble and pulls people out. But we let people be who they want to be, and who he wants to be is a journalist. And he's the worst fucking investigative journalist on the planet. He's got x-ray vision and super hearing. He could be the best investigative journalist ever. And really what I'm talking about is what happens when we have to keep selling comic books every month, when we have to keep coming out with the sequels to the movies. This is why we just do origin stories. Because these men can't become the heroes they were meant to be. And they teach us to trust these guys. Mr. Facebook and Mr. Amazon, who own, own all of our information and are rewriting the economy. And we trust them because they're billionaires and God gives sense to billionaires. <laughs> then there's this guy, our golden haired savior who will make America great again if we but trust him to do it. Mustache twirling cabinet appointees. And really where this is all going is these aren't the guys that are gonna save us. You want this guy, this is the chief of the New York police, or New York fire department. That's who you want when the towers fall. 
You want the Cajun Navy. People from Louisiana who threw their boats onto their trucks and drove to Houston to fish people out of the water. That's who's gonna save us. You and me, not men in tights, not with golden hair. It's us. Be your own heroes. Thank you.